Da -da 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 Hi there. Hey, this is Tom to be Whisperer. How the heck are you? <laughs> anyway, hey, uh, I'm going to do something different here. Uh, this is water. No, I'm not going to be drinking water. <laughs> well, I'm going to take a sip here while I tell you something. Uh, uh, I generally do, you know, I do five minute, you know, beer segments. I don't necessarily call them beer reviews because they're not necessarily reviews. It's just me kind of having a beer, talking about it, and I try to keep them right at about five minutes, you know, as not to run too long. But there are many times I have other things to talk about that want to run longer. So, uh, and you know, some of you know, uh, if you watched uh, some of the, in some of the sites, I've done some shows. Uh, with uh, James Madonna uh, 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 in a longer format, but that tends to run too long too. So I thought I'd try a new segment on my own that I want to call uh, Drinking with the Beer Whisperer uh, that I'll do, you know, maybe one, one of these a week because, uh, you know, that's about all I want to drink with you anyway. <laughs> and don't take it personal. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and, 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 uh, you know, I want it to be kind of a format where, I, you know, I'm just kind of going to kind of go over how I want to do things today with you, but uh, I'm going to eventually throw in topics like, uh, you know, uh, uh, bar etiquette, how it's changed over the years from when I was a kid to when I started drinking to now, uh, you know, the evolution of craft beer, uh, or beer in general, and how, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the microbreweries uh, came into play and then became the craft beer that we know today. Uh, the evolution of the cocktail, you know, from from my perspective, from when I started drinking uh, up, up to now, that kind of thing. I th and that's going to take more than five minutes, so I thought, well, maybe I'd try to keep it at about within a, about a 15-minute segment. You know, and hopefully, you know, some folks will want to stay with me for that long. And I'm going to do it in my own, and <laughs> you know, my, my own irreverent style. I'll give you some relevant information along with some, some goofing around. I'm probably going to tell a few bad jokes and, and some embarrassing stories. And I want to kind of have that feel as if, you know, you and I, we all were just hanging at a bar. And this is the conversation that we'd have if we were all in a pub together. Okay, so that being said, drinking with the beer whisperer. This is uh, how we're going to start today. I want to start with a little bourbon now. Um, <laughs> beer whispers on a budget, obviously. And, and I love good small batch bourbon. I also love good single malt Irish whiskey. I drink scotch upon occasion, but I'm a bigger fan of Irish. And I love the single malts. Uh, the truth is, is, you know, when you're looking at 25 35 45 55 you know, $100 a bottle, that you know, that, that tends to price a guy out, especially uh, with small batch bourbons. You're looking at 25 35 45 55 you know, $100 a bottle. And trust me, I won't say I've tried everything, because I know as soon as I show you what I'm going to be drinking, someone's going to show, well, you should drink this whiskey. It costs about $50 a bottle. Trust me, I probably drank it. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm trying to find something good on, on a budget. And I just saw this today, and I wanted to give it a try. Uh, is it rock gun? Uh, could very well be, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try it, and there's a couple reasons. Uh, it's old Fitzgerald, and looking it up, uh, I saw that it was it was it's distilled by Heaven Hill. Uh, it's uh, and there's another it's it's 50 percent, 100 proof, bottled in bond. Well, what does bottled in bond mean? Well, I'm gonna read from a website here. Uh, bottled in bond refers to American-made spirit that has been aged and bottled according to a set of legal regulations contained uh, in the United States government standards of identify for distilled spirits as originally laid out in the Bottled and Bond Act of 1897. Okay, you got that? There's actually more I'm going to read, but I want to get to pouring something, so I'm not often because we're actually, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm trying to create the illusion, illusion that we are having a drink in a pub. So let me pour me approximately, uh, uh, oh, let's just say that's about a jigger. That uh, might be a couple ounces, but I'm going to call it a jigger. A jigger, well, uh, a shot is an ounce. A jigger, uh, traditionally, is an ounce and a half. And you go to a double shot, two ounces. Uh, a lot of bars, you know, back in the day when I was a kid, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the shot glass, you, you see these old the big shot glasses 
it looked like a hole more than it did. There's a little white line. Uh, if you stop pouring at that white line, that's a shot. You keep pouring to the white line. Well, that was a jigger. Okay. Now, I'm going to do what some people are going to cringe over here a second. Oh, it doesn't have a bad aroma. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to do it. Okay. Well, if you've got two whiskey tastings, you know they ask you to do this. Swirl it around. Now, when you're checking the nose on whiskey, it's not the same as checking the nose on a... On, on beer or wine, for instance, because if you stick it right up to your nose, you're going to knock yourself out. You want to hold it down here. And this does have a nice aroma. I can smell sugar, so caramel. But if you've gone to tastings, you know they ask you to pour a little water in it. And, and there's a reason for that, because a little bit of water will open. Now, I'm not talking about 50-50, okay? I'm talking about just a tad, okay? So I'm going to pour just a little bit in there. And what that water will do is open up the nose, open up the flavors. Uh, some people don't like that, but if you actually got to an actual tasting, that's what they do, and that's what distillers will tell you to do. I'm not making this up, folks. And it does. Actually, now that I've done that, oh, wow. Uh, okay, it has opened it up quite a bit. Now that I've poured that, I want to read just a little more from their website. Uh, to be labeled as bottled and bond or bonded, the spirit must be produced. The spirit, oh, sorry, the spirit must be the product of one distillation season, one distiller at one distillery. It must have been stored in a federally bonded warehouse under U.S. government supervision for at least four years and bottled at 100 U.S. proof. So this must be a four-year-old bourbon, or at least a four-year-old. I'm guessing it's probably not older for the price I paid for it. I don't know if I told you that. Actually, one of the reasons I bought it was ten ninety-nine. I've looked up prices on the internet for it. Most of it, I, I, it ranged anywhere from seventeen to forty-seven. Forty-seven is probably not likely, but it, I did see it listed as that. Anyway, the bottled product label must identify the distillery by the DSP number where it was distilled, and if different, where it was bottled. While regulations apply to all spirits, in practice, most bonded spirits are whiskeys. A reaction to adulteration among spirits, the Bottled and Bond Act, made by the U.S. I'm sorry, made by the United States government, the uh, guarantor of the whiskey's authenticity, although without insurance of quality, Bottled and Bond whiskey came to be regarded as the good stuff. Okay, is this the good stuff by today's standard? I paid eleven dollars for it, probably not. But actually. You know, I've certainly drank worse. <laughs> uh, it was $11 a bottle. It's 100 proof whiskey. Uh, here's the bottle. Old Fitzgerald. I wasn't familiar with it, and I am a guy who is familiar with most bourbons. <laughs> I won't even tell you uh, how old I was when I had my first bourbon because somebody could get in trouble. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, and, and like I said, I, I, I like the good stuff. I do. But I'm currently on an extreme budget. I want to drink something decent, and I don't want to spit an arm and leg. So I've been kind of on that search for good whiskeys. Um, at home, for instance, I have a bottle. I like the single malt Irish whiskeys. They cost a little more. But I do have a bottle of uh, Clontarf Irish whiskey that I picked up for about 15 bucks a bottle. It's every bit as good. In my opinion, I actually like it better because it, it's deeper, richer, has more caramel, and a little more complexity than, than brands like, uh, you know, the uh, Jameson or Bush Mills that most people are familiar with, and it runs about seven, eight dollars a bottle cheaper. There you go. And, okay, here, here's a case where we've got an eleven dollar. Now, some people like to shoot whiskey. Uh, some people like to make cocktails out of it. I'm kind of like this. I'm generally a neat drinker. Every once in a while, I toss an ice cube in and get a cold. Some people don't like the cold, so it ruins it. Uh, you know, I, I personally don't think so. I think it just depends on your mood. It is going to change the character. So if, if you put ice in it, you are going to change the character. Now, I'm not talking about 100 ice cubes because then you're going to kill it. But maybe one or two uh, just to get it cold. And as that gradually melts, you're going you're gonna to see those flavors change on you. Okay, now that I've done that, I actually didn't think that part would take as long as it did. <laughs> Sorry about that. Because uh, I wanted to say, because here, this is how I like to drink. I like to have a beer and a little whiskey and sit and sit both. So this is my black walnut wheat from... Who's it from? It's from Glad You Asked. 
It's from Piney River. I'm making sure I'm pouring it way back here so I don't get yelled at. Don't you want to get anywhere near the computer? Because anytime anything happens to anything, it becomes my fault. I love the color on this, don't you? I mean, you kind of love that color, do you not? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, the particulars on it. <laughs> Wish I had them. <laughs> I did a review on this a while back uh, and, and did the particulars, and I should have had it all ready for me. But I was doing, you know, this is kind of just more, more of a segment on drinking. So I, you know, I, I believe it's about 4.5%. I'd be used, I don't remember. I'm thinking 17 or 19. I'll correct it later. No biggie. I mean, you know, let's not take this step that serious, right? Um, Again, this is a casual bar conversation. I do the five-minute videos to talk about more of the particulars. This, this uh, show, for lack of a better word, I want to talk about just drinking. You know, well, what what y'all do when you're not drinking? That's kind of what I want these 15 minutes to be about. And like I said, I'll get more into particulars uh, when I do others. This was kind of an introductory. Oh, Lord have mercy. And all you know, like I said, I'm going to act like we're in a bar and I'm going to tell bad jokes. And tell embarrassing stories about myself because there may be one or two out there. Uh, <laughs> I might have to invite some guests on here that have drank with me before that know a story or two. Back to the whiskey. Uh, you know, some people drink there for everybody has their own way of drinking. Uh, I don't always drink like this, but when I'm home and relaxing this after a tough week on a Friday or Saturday, I do like to pour about a jigger, you know, about a good shot and a half. That's sit with a nice beer or two, uh, especially during the fall when I'm having the, the larger, you know, uh, the, the, the larger beers, uh, higher ABV beers. I'll just have one of them and one of these, and I stretch that out over a couple hours generally. Uh, you know, like I said, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to be done with this by the time these 50 minutes are up, because that's not the point of it. I just wanted to show it to you, because I'm, you know, taking shots and down in beers, that's just about getting drunk fast. That's really pointless, man, because if you want to, it's a, for me, these, for me, drinking is about enjoyment. These shows are going to be about enjoyment, so you're not going to see me slam stuff. Well, not mostly. Maybe I'll do it once. Just to have a little fun. But for the most part, it's just going to be about drinking good stuff and having a conversation. So I hope you all like the idea of what I'm trying to do. Uh, you can give me some feedback if it ain't going to work or not. But I'm going to do a couple, three shows eh, just to see see how it works. We're going to call it Drinking with the Beer Whisperer. Because I've been drinking a long time, so I'll share what expertise I have with you. And you see if you can use some of that. Oh, this actually, I, I'm loving this beer right now, and I'll tell you why. Because it is, it, it, it feels rich. It feels decadent. It has those, those it has uh, some, some big nutty, you know, uh, black walnut notes. But yet, it has a big deep uh, color. But it is very light in body. So even, it feels like I'm drinking something big, but it's not. And that's what's nice is I'm able to relax with this beer today on this hot weather, but uh, you're know, drinking something bigger than a lighter lager. And that's why a beer like this is great. Oh. Whew. Well, I meant to tell a joke, uh, but I didn't get around to it. Should I tell one real quick before we get off of here? Uh. Now I'll save it for the next episode. My wife's here. She's going to make fun of me if I tell a joke. Okay, I'll tell one real quick. She's going to make fun of me anyway, she says. so. Jaren like to do these when she's out of the room, you know. Uh, when her and Seamus are off somewhere, that's usually where I try to sneak these in. But uh, this guy and his buddy are walking, and one of the guys real shy, and he looks around and sees this girl smiling. And he looks at his buddy, and he says, hey, she's smiling at me. What do I do? He says, smile back. So he smiles back. He turns his buddy says, now she's winking at me. What do I do? What do I do? He says, wink back. He winks back. He looks back at her, and uh, he looks at his buddy. He says, she's showing me her tits. What do I do? What do I do? He says, show her your nuts. He goes, Bleh. There you go. <laughs> That's Tom, the beer whisperer's bad joke, because yeah, we're supposed to be in a bar, and you're going to have jokes like that. Hey, uh, we're at a bar. 
And this is the end of the segment. So, Tom DeBeer Whisper, uh, Old Fish Turtle, Bottled and Bond, uh, Black Walnut Wheat. You all have a good day. I'll be back. I promise.